say about the Seattle expansion draft. Do not, Ron Francis, take Brandon Tanev. You, um, let's see, you won't like him. He doesn't work very hard, um, doesn't score much. Uh, let's see, doesn't come up big in big games. And, oh, by the way, unattractive contract that goes on forever. Just don't take him, okay? Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins. Comes your way bright and early every weekday morning. If you're into football and or baseball, I also offer up daily shots of Steelers and Pirates right where you found this. The protected list, all of them, were released yesterday, including the Penguins, and Ron Hextall's list came with a couple of unwelcome surprises, in my mind. Reviewing those very quickly, up front it was Sid, Gino, Jake Gensel, Brian Rust, Kasperi Kapanen, no surprises there. And then it was Teddy Bluger and Jeff Carter. A couple of surprises there. That's the seven. The defensemen, which really don't matter, at least I don't think so, because I didn't think there's any chance that uh, the Penguins defensemen were going to get claimed in this very specific controlled setting where Chris Letang, Brian Dumoulin, and Mike Matheson. And I have a feeling Matheson was only put on the protected list because the Penguins didn't have anyone else that they felt like they needed to put on, so they might as well have shown some respect for the season that he just put together, seeing as, you know, they've got to pay him a lot of money for a long time, whether they like him or not. And I'm not being cynical here about the season he just had. It was quite good. I thought he was a pleasant uh, surprise. The goaltender was Tristan Jari. Because why not? Again, same situation. I don't think Seattle would be taking either of Pittsburgh's goaltenders, so you might as well say, hey, we really believe in our guy. Ah, But then there's the forwards. Then there's the forwards. Tanev is left exposed. Tanev, to me, is screaming as an obvious choice for Seattle to take. Remember that when you're building an expansion team, you're building a team. And remember that in Seattle, although the expectations aren't going to be to match what Vegas did, which was out of this world in making the Stanley Cup final right away, that bar's been raised. So if the Kraken just suddenly stink and looked like and look like old school expansion teams, not necessarily sharks, but more along the lines of Uh, Predators and Blue Jackets and so forth, a lot of questions are going to be asked. So you do have to put together a team. You have to make it be something that's at least competitive right away. Tanev fits that. Tanev sets your tone. He's a pace setter. And contrary to all the misdirection I was trying to give Mr. Francis in the opening of this show, Tanev does a lot of things extremely well including all of those things that I said that he doesn't do well. I would hate to lose him. I would hate to lose him, not just because of who he is and how rare he is to find around hockey, Uh, not because he's a, you know, tough guy, snarly guy, hits people, mostly because of his speed and the fact that his speed almost never functions below 100%. That's the biggest thing. Tanev makes your roster a lot faster the first time he's over the boards. And the fact that he can kill penalties and score, which he does, he's he's good for getting into double-digit goals pretty much every year that he's been in the league. That's, that's a guy you want on your side. So I, I'm not sure that I did I get this. At least not yet. This portion of Daily Shot of Penguins is brought to you by Fubo TV. Monthly cost of cable is over two hundred bucks now. Fubo TV is sixty-five bucks a month to watch all the same channels, including AT and T, Sportsnet, Pittsburgh, 
And right now, listeners to this podcast get a seven-day free trial and 15% off your first month. Just go to FuboTV.com slash DK. No catch, no contracts, cancel anytime. Go to FuboTV.com slash DK to get 15% off your first month. I'd like to think right now that this isn't over. I'd like to think that the Penguins are engaged in something more significant than sitting around their offices at PPG Paints Arena waiting, holding their breath until Wednesday 8 p.m. to see if Seattle takes Tanev. I'd like to think that there's something more to this because if you step back from yesterday, if you look at everything that Hextall's done related to the expansion draft to date, this looks like some pretty lousy asset management. Okay? It's not over. It's not over. And there's nothing to prevent general managers from uh, trying to have their revenge on the expansion teams, so to speak, uh, relative to what George McPhee was able to do to the other 30 teams when Vegas raided pretty much everybody. There might be other machinations happening. There might be even some trickery at hand. So I, I'm feeling at least moderately reasonable in waiting to see how this plays out. But what I know right now is that the Penguins are positioned to lose two important players in an expansion draft where they only needed to lose one. And that is problematic for me, okay, <laughs> to say the least. To say the least. The Jared McCann trade to the Maple Leafs, to me, in isolation, I can live with it. In isolation. I like getting Philip Hollander back. I understand that the Penguins weren't going to protect McCann. Uh, and the Maple Leafs apparently don't think much more of McCann since they also left him exposed to Seattle. What does that mean? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. But it sure feels like it's something, doesn't it? Because otherwise it doesn't make any sense. Like, even on the Toronto end. From there, you know, you get into, all right, one guy's already off the list, and now who else are you going to protect? And you protect Carter, who's 36 years old, and we can't even be 100% sure that he's coming back next season. That's, you know... That's unusual territory. I can't picture, even with Seattle needing to be competitive right away, that they would use something as precious as an expansion draft pick. And those are precious. You get one crack, no pun intended, to build your first team that you'd put it on somebody you're pretty sure isn't going to be around for anything more than a year. Can you forgive the Penguins to an extent because you do need a second-line center for however long Evgeny Malkin is going to be out because of the knee surgery next year? Sure, I guess so, yeah. But again, you have to get into the concept of asset management here. You have other centers. You just re-signed Teddy Bluger. You have Radim Zahorna, who maybe could fill some kind of role whether it's second line, fourth line, whatever it happens to be. You don't protect Jeff Carter just for that. And Bluger, you know, I've been over this, and I, I hate doing this because it sounds like I'm, I'm cutting down Teddy, and that's not my intent. But out of all these players that we've discussed, Teddy, to me, feels like the most replaceable. He's a basic two-way forward. Not spectacular. He's solid. He's dependable. That's a credit to him. But he doesn't have, let's say, the upside of McCann, and he doesn't have the uniqueness of Tanev. So, you know, maybe, maybe it'll all make sense 
when it's done. Maybe, here, you want to get your hopes up about something? Maybe this is just Hextall moving this and that piece and this over here and that over there to try to bring in a goaltender. But here's hoping that along the way, he doesn't keep just throwing assets out the window. When we come back, just one question. Welcome back. It's time for Just One Question. That's brought to you on this program always by the good people at the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, where they're committed to providing food for all of our neighbors in need across western Pennsylvania. They're actually recommitted to doing that, and they're defining that in their rebranding, which you can read about, as long as I'm throwing re's out here, at their website, pittsburghfoodbank.org. Find out how $1 is all it takes to deliver five full meals to those in need. Question comes from Yinzer Dave. Yinzer Dave asks, what do you expect the Penguins' lines to look like at the start of the season? Ow! Dave coming at me with lines in July. Wow, okay. Um, You know what? Let's do this. Because you're not getting into defense pairings. Defense pairings would actually be the hardest because I don't know what to do if Cody Cece is lost. In fact, I'm pretty sure that all hope is lost if Cody Cece is lost. That's how strongly I feel about him. But you want forward lines. Let's go with forward lines. Obviously, as I had just mentioned in the previous segment, there seems to be an expectation, and a reasonable one, that Gino won't be ready to start the season. So let's take him out of the mix. Is that what you want to do? Because you're saying start the season as opposed to what's the ideal line chart or what it might be for game one of the playoffs next year. I would say that you would absolutely, in this scenario, leave Sid and Jake and Rust alone. Super obvious stuff there. For the second line, let's presume that Carter centers that unit and that you've got Kasperi Kapanen and Jason Zucker, I guess, would be next. And then, man, (laughs) you're going to really test me here because you would think that Teddy Bluger uh, elevates to the third line, in which case you would keep Zach Aston Reese and Brandon Tanev with him. But then... We don't know if Tanev, or for that matter, Aston Reese, who's also unprotected and has some tremendous defensive metrics, might be the guy that gets taken by Seattle. Oh, also, I should throw in parenthetically here, you don't know if the Penguins might be doing something where they offer Seattle some kind of gift if they take Zach Aston Reese rather than Tanev or whatever. I don't know. I, it, it, this stuff is just, let's just wait till it plays out. But anyway, that's the third line, presuming neither of those guys is taking the expansion draft. And your fourth line ends up being, you know, some kind of combination of ideally younger players that make an impression uh, from Wilkes-Barre, I, I mentioned Zahorna. I think he could be a guy that would center your fourth line and benefit from that early on in the season. Maybe give him a chance to make an impact and rise above a little bit. You do have Drew O'Connor. Don't forget about him. It seems like nobody ever mentions him. You've got Anthony Angelo if you're looking to uh, make sure that there's size. Heck, now as I say it, if you put the three of those together, you've got yourself a pretty big big fourth line that's that's young energetic you know theoretically would stick together have each other's backs might not be a bad idea there's also uh you know freddie goudreau uh, who'd have to be brought back you know and evan rodriguez other options like that that are in there um but those i i think would be fourth line types uh, if it gets to that simply because you're moving teddy up to the third line how did I do, Dave? All right? Now, you want to know who Seattle's taking. So do I. 
man, getting this expansion draft over with will be the best thing that happens in 2021. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We will do another one of these tomorrow. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to our DK Pittsburgh Sports channel. And don't forget to hit the bell to get notified every time we post a new video or podcast.